Using this template, we'll be tackling Chapter 9, Problem 3. In this problem, we are trying to decide on production and marketing. From the production side, we want to look at how many jars of apple sauce to produce and how many bottles of apple juice to produce. And from an advertising marketing perspective, we are trying to decide how much money to spend on apple sauce advertising and how much money to spend on apple juice advertising. So we have four decision variables, the production schedule for sauce and juice, two of them, and the advertising budget for the apple sauce and the apple juice is the other two. Our objective in this problem is maximizing profit. Our constraints are as follows. We know that the production of apple sauce should not exceed the demand and the demand is the base demand and then the boost you'll be getting by the marketing campaign. The same goes for the apple juice production. Also, the apple sauce production should be at least 20% and at most 60% of the total production. Finally, our total budget is $16,000. As you can see, I have used some spreadsheet engineering principles here. My worksheet is modularized, decisions, objective function, and constraints. I have used yellow color for the decision variables. I have used blue for all the inputs. And I have used this orange with thick borders for my objective function. Now again, what we're gonna try to do first is create a worksheet where we can try out different scenarios. Let's say I produce 100 jars of applesauce 200 jars of apple juice, I spend $10 on apple sauce advertising and $20 on apple juice advertising. First, I need to calculate the profit. The profit is a breakdown of revenue and cost. For the apple sauce production and apple juice production, obviously I'll be getting revenues from there, from those two. And the cost, if you look at the cost of apple sauce and apple juice, they're given to me by the problem. And here, these are somewhat um, totalities. Each apple sauce dollar spent is going to cost me a dollar, and each apple juice marketing dollar spent is going to cost me a dollar too. So the total profitability is given to you using row 12. Again, I'm going to use a sum product function here. Sum product, the production and marketing schedule, multiplied by the profit numbers. Now I have my total profit. The next thing I need to look at is say, well, what is your total apple sauce production? Well, that's 100. That should not be more than the base demand plus the boost you get. Well, how much boost do you get in this particular scenario? The boost is how many dollars you spend in apple sauce marketing times how many more units you sell per dollar spent in advertising. And the total demand is going to be the base demand plus the boost. And the same thing is going to go for apple juice. The total production is here. It comes from D6. The base demand is 4,000. The boost is going to be how many dollars I spend on advertising for juice and how many units do I get per dollar spending? And then my total demand is going to be the base demand plus the boost. The next thing I need to look at is that the apple sauce production should not be less than 20% and more than 60% of the total production. So the apple sauce production again is C6. Just from an aesthetics point of view, I merge these two cells, C20 and C21. It's going to be at least 20%, at most 60% of the total. What is the total production? It is the sum of these two, which is 300. And I'm going to need to find a 20% of that. And 
and I need to find 60% of that. And lastly, I need to find the total money spent, and that's going to be the cost of producing a jar of applesauce, cost of producing a bottle of apple juice, and the marketing expenditure. Maybe some product of the unit cost, so to speak, and the decisions. So I've set up my model. Now I can try out different scenarios. The next thing I'd like to do is optimize this problem, find the best solution. Now to find the best solution, I need to go to the solver dialog box. So for that, I go to analytics solver platform ribbon. I click on model. As you can see, nothing is populated right now. I'm going to move this way a little bit to have everything available. I expand optimization here. My objective is G12. So I go and choose objective. I'm in G12. I push plus and it gets me maximize G12. Uh, and again, if I want to change this, I can click on this, highlight it, and go over here and make the necessary changes. Then the decision variables, they are going to be normal. And then I go here and I highlight my four decision variables. And I just push plus. I got my decision variables here. The next one is constraints. I have my, I have normal constraints here. I push plus. Well, the first set is this. The total production should be less than or equal to the total final demand. That's one. Since I'm going to add more constraints, I push add here. The next one is the production of applesauce should be at least as much as 60 or E20 here, 20%, and at most 60% of the total production. And then finally, I should not exceed my budget. And then I go to my engine. I say automatically select engine. And then I go back to the model and I push optimize. And I get the solution. Now try to guess why I am making more apple juice than apple sauce and also why I'm not spending any money in apple sauce advertising and I'm spending money in apple juice advertising. Whenever you get an optimization solution, it's always good to check and see if it intuitively makes sense. This approach we have just seen is more of a business way of modeling an optimization problem but from an engineering perspective there is another way of modeling this problem so in order to look at that i will first show you the formulation of this problem using decision variables a mathematical formulation so here's the formulation we have i'm using s to describe the number of applesauce jars j to show the number of apple juice bottles a s stands for how many dollars I spend on advertising applesauce. AJ shows me how many dollars I'm spending for apple juice advertising. So my goal is to maximize the profit. So I write the profit for applesauce, profit for apple juice, and then subtract the money spent on applesauce and apple juice marketing. So that's my objective function. Then I write all my constraints. The first one is Total money spent should be less than the budget. I spend 80 cents for each applesauce jar production, 60 cents for each apple juice bottle production, and this is the money I spend on advertising, so that should not exceed $16,000. The next one is applesauce production should be less than or equal to the demand 
the base demand and the boost I get from advertising. The production for apple juice should not exceed the base demand plus the boost I get from apple juice advertising. The apple sauce production should be at least 20% of the total production and should be at most 60% of the total production. And when you look at these two constraints, I'm going to rewrite them as this so that I have constants on one side. I can also write these constraints the same way. So I had my five constraints, then I rewrote them here so that all the decision variables are on one side and all the constants are on the right hand side. Now that I have this representation of the problem, I'm going to utilize this to remodel the problem in Excel in a different way. So this is what the template looks like for that model. And then if you put formulas in column G, then you can actually optimize this one as well. And this is the solution you get. As you can see, we get the same solution using a different template and using a different approach. But the idea is the same. Personally, I prefer the first version because it has a more business logic flow, but the second version might make more sense to some of you. So that's why I wanted to show that. So that concludes our presentation of problem three.